Hello, good day everyone. I will be discussing about Chinese literature. I will be your presenter, Alcation Flores Sara. What we'll discuss is about what is China first, followed by the official languages in China, religion, dynasties, government, four classes of Chinese literature, dynasty, education, racial and ethical groups, Chinese writers, and literary peace. Before we will start our sharing about the Chinese literature, I have here the quote of K. Redfield Chamonson. The Chinese believe that before you can conquer a beast, you first make it beautiful. You will be this quote will be meaningful after we will be discussing about the Shang Dynasty up to the modern dynasty. There is a lot of changes that makes the Chinese historical heritage is beautiful. So what is Chinese? Okay, so China is the Republic's people of China and this country is a part of East Asia. The capital of the China is Beijing. The flag of the China was officially adopted on October 1, 1949. The flag is a combination of two colors, the red and yellow. It symbolizes the history and culture of Chinese people. It is the unification of people in China as one nation after decades of dynasties and deviation. Based on the color of the flag, red symbolizes the communist revolution. Larger gold star symbolizes the communism. Four smaller stars are the social classes of the people. Chinese literature is the body of works written in Chinese, including the lyric poetry, historical didactic writing, drama, and various forms of fiction. Chinese literature consists of true feelings and have the freedom to use any kind of format and pattern. The classical Chinese is the one of the major literary heritage in the world. It is the vast subject that past thousands of years, it reflects the Chinese culture and it includes various literary genres from Shang Dynasty up to the modern era. The official languages in China, first the Mandarin, Cantonese, Hakka, Wu, Min, Zhang, and Gan. The religions in China. First, we have here the polytheistic. During the Shang Dynasty, polytheistic meaning the people worshipped many gods or deities. Like monotheism, the word polytheism can be used in the context of a specific religions such as Hinduism or outside of a formal religion like animism. The idea that everything has a soul. Shamanism, the belief in shamans who have the ability to communicate with the spiritual world. Ancestor worship and deviation. Different gods represented natural and mythological symbols such as the moon, the sun, the wind, the rain, the dragon, and the phoenix. Buddhism was the founded in six century BCE by Siddhartha Gautama. The wisdom, it is the connection of the philosopher Lao Tzu around 500 BCE. Islam, it was founded in 7th century. It was linked to the prophet Muhammad. Catholicism, it is founded in 1st century. Protestantism, it was founded by Martin Luther and John Calvin, it began in 1517 in Germany. The government in China. First, the Shang Dynasty, 
was a monarchy governed by the Assyrian kings. Over the course of almost 600 years, the king was served by official, officials who had specialized positions of authority and function, and the officials belonged to a hereditary class of aristocrats. usually related to the king himself. The Zhou dynasty, it is around 1045 to 255 BC. It is feudalism, a feudalism system. It's a type of a social and political system in which landholders provide land to tenants in exchange for their loyalty and services. The Qin Dynasty, it is around 221 to 206 BC. It is absolute monarchy. It is a form. It is a form of government in which a single person, usually a king or queen, holds absolute autocratic power. But in Qin Dynasty, emperor holds the throne. In absolute monarchies, the succession of power is typically hereditary with the throne passing among members of the ruling family. The Han Dynasty, it is about 206 BC to 220 AD. It was governed by a centralized monarchy headed by an emperor and supported by an elaborate structure of imperial administration. The Han government was divided into three branches. The civil service or the public administration, the military or the defense, and censorate or the auditory. The many Han provinces were managed as commanderies, districts under the control of commander, headed by the governor and then the commandant. Tang Dynasty it is about 618 to 907. It is a monarchy. It was ruled by an all-powerful emperor since it was founded by the ancient Li family in 618. Li Yuan was the first emperor of the Tang Dynasty. His rule initiated several centuries of economic prosperity and culture vibrancy. The Tang Dynasty governed Government had three basic departments that created policies and laws. These frameworks of laws were administrated by six ministries, which were personal administration, military, finance, rights, justice, and public works. The Song Dynasty was about 960 to 1279. It is a monarchy which governed by an emperor. It is a form of government in which a person, the monarch, is head of the state for life until abdication. The political legitimacy and authority of the monarch may vary from restricted and largely symbolic to fully autocratic and can expand across the domains the domains of the executive. The Yuan dynasty, it is around 1,279 to 1,368. It was a absolute monarchy. The Ming dynasty was, lasted, was the last imperial, imperial dynasty of China, ruled by the Han dynasty, by the Han Chinese. The Ming Dynasty is characterized by effective governing of social stability. Unlike to the previous dynasty, the Ming Dynasty had only one department, the Secretariat. The Secretariat controlled the six ministries. They were headed by a minister and the day-to-day -day affairs were looked after by a director all under the direct control of the emperor. Let's proceed to the Qing Dynasty. It was around 1644 
to 1,111. It was absolute imperial monarchy. The Qing dynasty was an empire led by a Manchu. Manchu, the, ethica, the ethnic group which ruled China for 1,644 to 1,911 AD. The king government was an absolute imperial monarchy with the authority vested in an emperor who served as head of state, head of government, and leader of the armed forces. The emperor supervised a system of six executive ministries and 24 military divi divisions. The modern era, around 1812 to the present, the People's Republic of China in 1912, after over 2,000 years of imperial rule, a republic was established to replace the monarchy. The Qing Dynasty that preceded the republic had experienced instability throughout the 19th century and suffered from both internal rebellion and foreign, and foreign imperialism. The Chinese Communist Party or the CCP is the, is the founding and ruling political party of the modern Chinese, China officially known as the People's Republic of China. So let's move on to the four classes of literature. The first is the classical literature, modern literature, contemporary literature, present age literature. The Chinese classical literature, it is around 1644 to 1911, refers to the earliest period of, and covers the work from 3,000 years ago to the late Qing Dynasty and is virtually unbroken strands injury, enduring dynastic changes. Written in an ancient form of language that is very different from present-day Chinese. It needs to be carefully studied to be understood. Chinese modern literature. It refers to the period from the Opium War in 1840 to May Fourth Movement in 1919. Opium War, this is the war between two wars in the mid-19th century involving Angolo-Chinese dispute over the British. People observed the impact of Western thought as foreigners poured China and established their colonies, novels, poetry, and other works began to appear with the theme of patriotism and revelation of a social literature. The contemporary literature in 1919 to 1949 spanned period from 1919 to the foundation of a modern in 1949 and took a new vigor, the strength or power dispute the fact that Chinese war, Chinese was in the Czech and complicated times. Present age literature in 1949 to the present evolved since the establishment of the People's Republic in 1949. During this time, there was a log jam and a consequence of a cultural resolution that lasted for near 10 years that era is now long past and we now have a favorable turn event and a great number of responsible written works. There are 10 dynasties of Chinese literature. The first is the Shang Dynasty. It is about 1700 to 1050 BC. It, it is the development of Chinese writing. 
Zhao Dynasty it is around 1045 to 255 BC. It is the basic philosophical and religious literature. Qin Dynasty it is around 221 to 206 BC. It is the literary disaster in legalism. Han Dynasty it is around 206 BC to 220 AD. It is the scientific and historical text. Tang Dynasty, it is around 618 to 907. It is the early wood block printing and poetry. Song Dynasty, it is around 960 to 1279. Early wood block printing, travel literature, poetry, scientific texts, and the Neo Confucian classics. Yuan Dynasty, it is around 1279. To 1368, it is the drama and the great fictional novel. Ming Dynasty, it is around 1368 to 1644. Novels. King Dynasty, it is around 1644 to 1911. It was the novels and the pre-modal literature. The modern era of 1912 to the present. It is a westernized literature. So let's move on to the Shang Dynasty. It is about 1700 to 1050 BC. It is the development of the Chinese writing. The first dynasty for which there is a historic record and archaeological evidence in Shang Dynasty. It was a small empire in the northern central China. No documents from that country survive, but there are archaeological finds of heliographic uh, writing on bronze wares and oracle bones, which are writing at this time was mostly a pictographic, meaning that the word was represented by a picture that closely reassembled its meaning. Over time, this writing would become more into a Ideographic and party phonetic Chinese characters. Let's go to the Zhu Dynasty. It was a contemporaneous with the Shang Dynasty, and then they conquered the Shang Dynasty. Their dynasty lasted for about 800 years. But for the most of the time, their original territory was broken up into dozens of competing kingdoms. And this finally coalesced into several big and warring kingdoms by the end of the Zhou era. The great literary works of philosophy and religion that become the basis of Chinese, Chinese religion and social belief stem from what is called the spring and autumn period of 770 to 476 and the warring states period 475 to 221. The wisdom, Confucian literature and other prominent religion and philosophical schools all emerged during this two period. The literary works in this era duplicate the Chinese philosophy and religion. The Qin Dynasty is the literary disaster in legalism. At the end of the Zhu Dynasty era, that is called the Warring State Period and the surviving few big states in the land, the Qin Dynasty became the most powerful. This is the period of a literary disaster in legalism. The Qin Dynasty had a big army and conquered the others. Once the Qin Emperor had control, he wanted to keep it and they squished another position to his authority. In the conquered territories, there were teachers of many different doctrines and religion. A big philosophical and religion schools then was called Mahism. They were particularly attacked by the Qin Dynasty. An early form of Buddhism was also established in China at the time, but their temples and literature were destroyed and he ordered to destruction 
of the most books all over the empire. He even killed many Confucian philosophers and teachers. He allowed books on scientific subjects like medicine or agriculture to survive. So the books burning and burial of scholars was literary disaster. Qin Dynasty standardized the written classical language. It is said that a minister of the Qin Emperor named Li Si introduced the writing system that later developed into the modern Chinese writing. Qin Emperor favored a school that was called legalism, writing on politics and laws, and his propagation of this school much influenced the political thinking in the Han Dynasty and later eras. Legalism texts and the standard decision of the writing were in the Qin dynasty era. Literary contributions during pre-Qin period prose was prevailing during that time. Writing were characterized by the profuse expression of true, of true feelings and the flexibility of the formats and patterns. It facilitated needs to record the different ideas and thoughts of different schools. Therefore, it is no surprise that essays and writings tied with a strong political colors, such as Analects of Confucius, Muzi, Mencius, are all presented in this time. The Han Di Dynasty it is a scientific and historic text. The Han Dynasty era lasted for 400 years. At the beginning of the era, Confucianism was revived. Confuci Confucian texts were rewritten and republished. Confucianism was mixed with the legalism philosophy of Lisi. The resulting ideology was the official ideology of the Han dynasty and influenced political thinking afterwards. The Han Dynasty era was one of the two main hotspot era for scientific and technical advance, but printing wasn't available for wide publication of the information. During the Eastern Han Dynasty toward the end of Han era, the influence of the philosophy of the Confucian classics that hindered scientific progress was winning. So people were more free to pursue invention. The era major contribution was historical text and scientific works. Sima Kwan wrote historic records that is a major historic concern in the overall history of China before the Shang Dynasty until the Han Dynasty. The book's prose was considered the model for writers in a succeeding dynastic eras. Another important historic text concerned the Han Dynasty itself. Prose was further developed, essay combining prose writing and rhymes, become more popular and new format. Fu emerged and developed into a mainstream format of literature. The imperial court is said to be the first person in the world to create writing paper was Chai Lun. And this was important for written communication. At the end of two or three mathematical texts showing advanced mathematics to the times were written, he made sheets of paper from inner bark of bamboo, mulberry trees, rugs and cloths and fishing nets. The Tang Dynasty, it is a woodblock printing and poetry. The Tang Dynasty had a big empire that benefited from a trade with the West, with the West along the Silk Road, battled with the Tibetan Empire and experienced the growing influence of organized Buddhism religions. This era main contribution to Chinese literature was in the poetry of Du Fu 
Levi, and many other poets. Dufu and Levi are often taught as a Chinese, a China's greatest poets. Levi in 701 to 762 was one of the greatest romantic poets of ancient China. He wrote at least a thousand poems in a variety of subjects from a political matter to natural scenery. Du Fu also wrote more than a thousand poems. He is thought of as one of the greatest realist po poets of China. His poems reflect the hard realities of war, dying people living next to the rich rulers, and primitive rural life. He was an official in the Tang capital of Shang'an, and he was captured when a capital was attacked. It is thought that he lived in a simple hut where he wrote many of his best realist poems. Perhaps more than 1,400 of his poems survived, and his poetry is still read and appreciated by a modern Chinese people. Poetry originated in the pre qin period, became popular in the Tang Dynasty. Conciseness, magnificent, Magnificent word and paraphrasing poetry has a certain rhymes and rhythms that can better express one's thoughts and emotions. Famous poets in the Tang Dynasty are Levi, the poet immortal literary works is the Quiet Night Thought. This remains one of the Levi's most famous and memorable poems. Du Fu, the poet saint his literary works is the Behind Ridden Doors, Stink Wine and Meat. By Suji, Poet Magician. His literary works is Song of Everlasting Sorrow. Li He, Poet Wizard. His literary works is the collection of poems of Li He. The Song Dynasty or the early woodlock printing, travel literature, poetry, scientific texts, and the Neo Confucian classics. The next dynasty it is called the Song Dynasty. It was weaker than the Tang Dynasty, but imperial government officials make remarkable scientific and technical advance advances. Military technology greatly advanced. They traded little with the West due to the presence of warring Muslim states on the old trade routes. There wasn't territorial expansion, but the empire was continuously attacked by the nomadic tribes and, and countries around them. Their northern, northern territory was invaded and they were forced to move their capital to the southern China. So the era is divided into two eras called the Northern Song and Southern Song eras. One of the era's technological accomplishments was the invention of movable type about the turn of second millennia during the North Song period. This helped to spread knowledge since printing material could be published more quickly and cheaply. Travel literature in which authors wrote about their trips and about various destinations become popular, perhaps because the text could be cheaply brought. The Confucian classics were he defied and used a test of material for an entrance examination into an elite bureaucracy, advanced scientific texts, and atlases were established, and important poems were written. 
Juji prescribed a specific order to the four books and five classics. The four books were to be read before the five classics and were to be read this way. First, to read the great learning to fix upon the patterns of the Confucian way. Next, the analects to establish its foundation, foundations. Next, the mentions to observe its development. And next, maintaining perfect balance to the discover the mystery mysteries of the ancient that the great learning provides within its covers as a series of steps and precise order in which they should be read first although the analects is con concrete its sayings are scattered about in a fragments on the first reading it is difficult mentions contains passage that inspires and arose man's minds Maintaining perfect balance, too, is difficult to understand. It should be read only after other three books. The four books. The first, The Great Learning. The Great Learning is a guide for immoral self-cultivation. Analex, it was written during the spring and autumn period through the warring state period, the Analect is the collection of Kongsi teachings or, the Confu or Confucius and discussed with a disciples. The great learning emphasized learning. So did the Analects. According to the Analects, the first step in knowing the way is to devote oneself in learning. In addition, the learning in addition to learning, the Analex emphasized the importance of good governance, filial PT, virtue, and ritual. Manchus is a collection of conversation Manchus had with Kangzi. Manchus, Manchus places a strong emphasis on the responsibility of the emperor to practice good government, governance through following the way. Additionally, Mencius believe that all human beings are inherently good. One of the most popular passages from Mencius note that all human instinctively respond with alarm and compassion when we were chat tittering on the edge of a wheel. The Doctrine of Mean the doctrine of mean has been translated in many ways, including the constant mean and maintaining perfect balance. The doctrine of mean is a attributed to CZ, the grandson of Kongzi or Confucius, and, the, it, and it deals how to maintain the perfect balance and harmony of one's life. It focuses on the way in acting in accordance with what is right and natural, but acknowledges that people often do not act properly. The five classics includes the classic of history or book of documents, the classic of poetry or book of Odes, the record of rites, the book of changes, the spring and the autumn annals. That was mainly a historic record of Confucius' native state of Lu. The book of document is a compilation of 58 chapters detailing the events of ancient China. The book of documents the deeds of the early sage kings Yao and Shun. These narratives are influence, influential in the development of the understanding of sage. The compilation also includes the history of Shang and Zhu dynasty. The book of documents is often considered the first narrative history of the ancient China. Book of Odes is also translated as the Book of Songs or Book of Poetry. The Book of Odes is comprised 305 poems dealing with a range of issues 
including love and marriage, agricultural concern, daily lives, and war. The Book of Odes contains different categories of poems, including the folk songs and hymns using in sacrifice, kongzi, pinying, romanization, also known as Confucius, believed to have selected the 305 poems in the collection from a much wider collection. Book of Rights The Book of Rights describes social norms, governmental organi organization, and the ritual conduct, conduct during the Zhou Dynasty. Believed to have been compiled by the Kongzi, the Book of Rights is the foundation of many ritual principles that arise in later imperial China. According to the Book of Rights, proper ritual conduct would maintain harmony in the empire, as well as emphasize the virtue of pity. The Book of Change contains a system of div divination, which it is center centered largely around the principles of yin and yang. The Book of Change has also been translated as a, as a cheek or a classic of changes. Some of the divination practice are still used today. The Autumn and the Spring Annals, as the longest of the five classics, the Spring and the Autumn Annals is a historical chron chronicle of the state of Lu. Unlike the Book of Document, the Spring Autumn Annal appear to have been created especially for the analytic purposes. The Spring and Autumn Annals were traditionally understood as being written by Confucius. But modern scholars believe that the text was actually written by a various chroniclers from the state of Lu. Another period of scientific progress and technical invention was the Song era. Song technicians seem to have made a lot of advancement in medical engineering. They made advanced contraption out of the gears, pulleys, and wheels. These were used to make big clocks and mechanical odometer or animal drone carts and marked land distance by a making noise after traveling a certain distance. An other advanced instrument, the song technicians also invented many uses gunpowder including rockets, explosive, explosives, and big guns. The imperial court officials did remarkable scientific research in many areas of mechanics and science. Shinku and Su Song both wrote scientific treatises about their research and about different fields. Shin is said to have discovered the concept of true north and magnetic declination toward the North Pole. He also described the magnetic needle compass. If Chinese sailor knew about this work, they could have sailed long distance. More accurately, this knowledge would predate European discover he did advanced astronomical research for this time. Susong wrote a threatis called the Penkau Tujing with a information of medicine, botany, and zoology. He also was the author of the large celestial atlas of five different star maps, and he also made land atlases. Susong was a famous for his hydraulic powdered astronomic clock tower. Shu's clock tower is said to have had an endless power transmitting chain drive that he described in a text on the clock design and ast astronomy that was published in 1992. If this is so, it may be the first time such device was used in the world.
when the Southern Song Empire was conquered by the Mongols, this invention and the astronomic knowledge may have been forgotten. Another contribution to the literature of China was the poetry of the Song era. Poetry evolved into gen genre C. Essentially, song poems composed for banquet and such events. There were strict rules on number of sentences and word and on the intonation of each words. As is one said, sound is one of the basic form to convey aesthetic information. Song C is a considered as high aesthetic value according to the different writing style. It is composed of two schools, the bold and unconstrained, and graceful and restrained. The former was led by representatives such as Sachi and Shaikuji while later include poets such as Yo Yong and Li Qingzhao. Yuan Dynasty Drama and Great Fiction Novels The Puppet Drama in Yuan Dynasty The Mongols were a nomadic people who herded castle north of the Tang Empire and wandered over a large area, fighting on a horseback. They believed that they might be able to conquer the world. They easily conquered Persia, far to the west. It was the big empire with a high technology, a big population and a big army. Then they decided to try to conquer all the countries around them. They attacked the Tang Dynasty, the Bali Kingdom, and the Yunnan, and much of Asia, as they formed the biggest empire in the history of the earth until then. They conquered Russia, a part of Eastern Europe, and a part of the Middle East. In China, the Mongols established the very rich Yuan Dynasty. And there comes the Mongols were entertained by the shadow puppet place in which the lamp cast shadow of little figurines and puppets on the screen of shit. In the Yuan dynasty, puppet drama continued to entertain the rich dynasty court in a vernacular language. Dramatic operatic theaters with the human actors speaking in a vernacular language was a favorite form of the entertainment as well. In some of the China best dramatic script were written then. Also, there are two or four novels that are generally considered China's best lit literary classics were written in a vernacular language then. So, through that Yuan Empire wasn't ruled by China or the Chinese people, it was an era of uh, some historically re-owned dramatic playwrights and novelists who wrote in a vernacular language. It is thought that the operatic style of the shadow puppet dramas that entertained the courts influenced the development of the operatic theater style of the Yuan dynasty. The Yuan dynasty rulers were fabulously wealthy according to the historic accounts. They have a vast empire and control of trade in Eurasia, Europe or Europe and, Ra and Russia. For the, for the royal courts of the rich people, refined music, sound effects, and talented singers were employed for the shadow plays. The Yuan Saju style of opera, opera was similar to their shadow plays. Perhaps the playwrights adopt the plot and the features. There were exciting plots, elaborate cos costumes, refined music, and singing, acting, dance, and the Mongols enjoy. The music of Zaju operas was called Yuan Q, or the Yuan music. The language used wasn't the classical language, but the, but the vernacular language. 
so that the theater might be enjoyed by the everyone. After the Yuan Dynasty, the operatic style developed into a painted faces style of Chinese opera that was popular until, until modern times. Yuan Hanking is regarded as one of the best playwrights of the, of the times. He wrote Midsummer Snow that was one of the most popular drama piece. It is a tragedy about an injustice accused a woman who received justice after her death. Maji Yuan Atom in a Han Palace is referred to as the apparition of a lonely goose in the dark dream in the autumnal palace, which described the tragic love story between the Emperor Yuan of Han and his concubine Wang Zhaoju. And Romance of the Western Chamber was written by Wang Shifu. It is considered one of the best romantic dramas ever written in China. It also translated into a story of a Western wing tells the story that the gifted scholar and beautiful lady falling in love at first sight, but have to overcome lots of obstacles to finally get married. In the Western wing, it tells about the love of first sight. So we have here the novels were another outstanding achievements of the Yuan era. The novelist influenced the future development of the genre. Journey to the Western Wing, but two novels are still widely read now and are generally considered two or of the four greatest novels in the Chinese literature. These are The Water Margin and The Romance of the Three Kingdoms. The Romance of the Three Kingdoms was written in a vernacular language by Lu Juan Zhu. It is a historic fiction about the end of the Han Dynasty and the Three Kingdoms period. Water Margin is about the lives and ideas of a group of character characters who fought against the corrupt Northern Song Dynasty that the Mongols conquered. It is said it was written in a vernacular language and were written by Lu Guanzhong, who was also the author of the Romans of the Three Kingdoms. Ming Dynasty are the novels. The Ming initially were interested in exploration and Muslim whose ancestors arrived during the Yuan Dynasty and who were familiar with a seagoing sea trade were employed to make a long voyage on the, on the uh, voyage to the Indian Ocean, the Middle East, and perhaps Africa. Then they become isolationist. It is interesting that the book that is one of the four great classic called Journey to the West about a monk going to India was written during this time of isolation. Maybe the thought of travel to the land in the West was appealing then. Novel, novels were the era's main contribution. The journey to the West is based on the historic journey of a Buddhist to India during the Tang era to learn Buddhist teaching and bring back scriptures and information. In 1629, Zhuang, Zhuang Zhang left Chang'an in 629 and arrived back in Chang'an in 646. Mythical tales about this journey include the characters of an intelligence monkey began to be circulated long before the book was written. The author drew on known tales. Journey to the West is thought to have been published anonymously by Wu Ching En in the 16th century through the scholar of thought about the authorship. The trend is I the trend is in that era was for people to write a classic uh, Chinese and imitate the literature of the Tang Dynasty and Han Dynasty. However, this book was written in a vernacular, perhaps become there was a lack of accurate, accurate geographical knowledge available to the author 
much of the geographical landscape of the story is inaccurate. Perhaps the author meant to poke fun of the Chinese religion because of the monkey said to have defeated a whole army led, the, led by Tuest God, and only the Buddha invention stopped the monkey. The book described India as a land of gross, and as gross sin and immortality. The monk was commissioned by Buddha to help India. The characters in the book are well continue are known to the Chinese children and they often appear in the martial arts, movies, and cartoons. King Dynasty Novel and Primoda Literature The Manchus invaded the Ming Empire to the north and established the last dynasty called the Qin Dynasty. The Manchus were not Chinese, but they retained the Neo-Confucian governing system of the Song and Ming eras. The Qing dynasty came under increasing attack from both internal rebellions in foreign countries in 19th century. Foreign literature in the West became better known. In the middle of, the, of this era, the last China four great classic novel was written called Shrim and the Red Chamber. And near to the end of the era, modernistic literature developed. The dream of the Red, Cham the Red Chamber also has a uncertain authorship like the other 33 great classic novels. It was written in a vernacular language, the Mandarin language, that was the language of the king capital. It is probably most composed by Chao Jai Chao Jaikin about 1715 to 1763 in the middle of 1700 and the first printing of the book was in the late 17th. It is thought that Chao did not live to see the first printing. It is thought that another person or another people contributed the ending of the story since originated ending of the story was lost. The book has a lot of textual problem. There are different versions and preface to printing version in, 19, in 1792. Two editors claim to have put together the ending based on the author's working manuscripts that they had brought form of street vendor. At the end of the Qing Dynasty era, the dynastic ruler came under increasing pressure both from a foreign attacks and internal rebellions. Educated Chinese had easier access to the foreign literature and they were more influenced by Western culture. Students started to travel abroad to study and schools built by missionaries educated tens of thousands of students. There was a general sense of crisis and intellectuals started, intellectual started translating foreign works on science, politics, and literature. These were popular and culture started to change. Some writers produced fiction more like Western fiction. The modern era, it is westernized literature. Sun Yat-sen led a revolution that marked the end of the Chinese dynasty, in which clan ruled an empire of a course, the big change of Chinese society that happened with a change of government led to a change in a literature. It became westernized and the classical language wasn't used. The national, national government wanted women to have more an equal status in a society and women writers and scholars were taken more seriously there was a lot of political oriented literature printed scholars had access to foreign literature and many students studied abroad until about 1900 uh, 1923 there was a culture movement 
writers generally wanted to lead the way in, in transforming China into a modern industrialized country and replacing Confucian lifestyle with a westernized one. Under the national government, there was some freedom of expression and lots of review and style of literature were popular. China came under attack from Japan after the communist victory only, liter only literature approved by the governance was allowed. Before I will end this, this discussion, I will leave you a Chinese proverb. It's better to make a slow progress than no progress at all. Thank you for listening. Once again, I am Alcation Flores Sera discussing about the Chinese literature. Once again, thank you and have a good day. I hope you have learned within the Chinese literature of what I've discussed. Goodbye!